example, from a funding perspective, uh, we're advocating um, for protection programming to be 15 to 20 percent of the wider HRP. Uh, but we're also looking at uh, clusters, non-protection clusters, to have proportion of their funding dedicated uh, for delivering protection outcomes. We're also looking at development and peace programming to have proportion of their uh, resources dedicated for uh, for protection outcomes. So we're we're driving this uh, uh, this message, and I think uh, uh, it's it's important to uh, to state that at the beginning of this meeting. We also every year issue the centrality of protection report that uh, Dahlia, who's with us today, has uh, written a number of them and also supporting us uh, for the centrality of protection report this year. And what we're doing different this year is that we're looking at all the other clusters uh, to, uh, to write their own chapter in this report of how uh, CCM and shelter and health and wash, how are they? implementing and putting in practice the centrality of protection. Uh, so that's another example of how we're driving this, uh, this agenda for, forward. Another one is, uh, of course, you know, uh, there are these new results groups uh, that organize the Interagency Standing Committee, IASC work at global level. And in one of them, results group one, we are supporting that results group to define indicators uh, to measure uh, the achievement against the centrality of protection. So that's also a third entry point that we're looking at. But of course, all of this is uh, needs to be built on the field practice. Uh, and one of the foundational things we started with, uh, uh, with Dahlia this year, is to look at how are we actually pulling together centrality of protection uh, in your operations. And one starting point is, of course, uh, HCT protection strategies. These strategies have been introduced a couple of years ago. Uh, we see most of the operations today have an HCT protection strategy, but they have developed through, been developed through, through different mechanics. They have achieved different uh, shapes and looks, and their implementation have taken different, uh, different shades of gray. Uh, uh, going forward. So uh, we looked with uh, Dahlia to review how are these strategies in place now? Do they actually serve their purpose, which is to put in practice centrality of protection? Uh, so Dahlia has looked at several operations, also in collaboration with Results Group 1, uh, and uh, have pulled together uh, some overview and a number of recommendations pulled together in the report that was shared with you. So the purpose of today is to share with you uh, uh, some of the thinking uh, we're going through, bearing in mind the, the complementary elements that I've mentioned, uh, and hear from you if it makes sense, uh, the recommendations that we have reached, and how can we take that forward uh, to make these processes more effective. So with this, I would like to, uh, again, thank you for being with us on time on this important topic count on you um, to keep pushing for the centrality of protection and hand over to Dahlia to take us through uh, what she has learned and the recommendations she's putting forward. Dahlia, the floor is yours. Thank you, William. And hello to everybody. It's, it's really nice to see so many familiar names pop up. Uh, just for those that uh, don't know me and just as, a, as an introduction, uh, I'm Dahlia Aranki and I have been, um, I'm, I'm a ProCAP advisor and I'm currently hosted by the Global Protection Cluster. And as William said, I've been supporting uh, the cluster's work on centrality of protection. So one of the um, pieces of work that I have done with the colleagues of the GPC is this HCT protection strategies review. So I'm going to share the presentation now with you all. Um, just to go through, as William said, some of the findings. Um, many of you have actually participated in the process of putting this review together. So thank you to, to all of you for that. And because so many of you, I understand a lot of you are, are coordinators, co-coordinators involved in the coordination at country level, you will have been involved in your in the HCT protection strategies in your country 
um, if your HC has one, HCT has one. So I'm just going to go through. I don't. I hope hopefully uh, you will have had a chance to look at the report. Uh, but if not, I'm going to go through it. Uh, just the top line point summary. Um, background and looking at some of the key insights and recommendations. And then there's a chance for discussion as well in terms of your experiences, as William said, whether the recommendations resonate, do they make sense to you, and how we can work together to implement them and what that requires at global level and also at country level and what support would be needed from global level in particular. Um, if you have any questions or input or suggestions, please do um, include them in the chat. There will be chance as well afterwards to put your hands up. I think Nancy is going to help me with that uh, in terms of collecting any questions or feedback. But otherwise, I'll just start. So in terms of background, and this is something that's familiar to to all of us, the idea where did the centrality of protection come from? It's something that has been worked on for a number of years, but it really was formulated most uh, most concisely in 2013 with the statement of the IASC principles um, issuing their their statement on centrality of protection and humanitarian action, which was a very powerful statement at the time and, and remained so. It really uh, stressed how the protection of persons at risk, those affected by crisis, their, um, the risks that they face, their vulnerabilities and the ways that people cope should be the central tenant of any humanitarian response. So it should be part of the services that we're providing and really not just part, but inform decision making and operational response. So that was the, the starting point and it was articulated in that statement. The 2016 IASC policy on protection in humanitarian action um, then uh, articulated that in more detail, giving a more comprehensive perspective in terms of what does that mean to have centrality of protection and humanitarian action. And if you haven't, I, I really uh, recommend going back to that policy. It is very useful because it sets out the, the ways that protection can be operationalized. Also, it has a lot of definitions and sets out roles and responsibilities. It also took up this point that was originally uh, set out in the statement about one way of operationalizing centrality of protection would be to have an HCT protection strategy. And to support that, uh, there was some guidance was prepared by the Global Protection Cluster with support from Interaction and OCHA. And that was used as the basis for the HCT protection strategies that we know. There are other guidance documents as well, but that one is the, the main framework. And we have uh, been implementing these HCT protection strategies at country level since about 2015. So, um, I don't, we're probably, this is probably a bit out of date, but at the time of this review at the beginning of the year, 22 out of 29 countries with humanitarian coordinators had a strategy. That may be more now. Um, and so that's five years on. It meant it's a good chance for us to review those, uh, as William said, the evolution of these strategies. So just some background to this review. Um, the IASC results group one on operational response has a subgroup on centrality of protection. So this review was done very much in connection with the work of that subgroup, which GPC is, is, it participates in and, and supports. And in turn, the results of this review were shared and are shared and form part of the basis of the work of the subgroup on centrality of protection. So a lot of you will be aware if you're in one of these 10 countries that the subgroup selected 10 countries to um, review, to, to request those countries that, uh, to reflect on how the protection policy has been implemented, implemented at country level. Uh, the report sets out how those countries were selected and um, a country, what was called a country reflections exercise was, sh was shared with each of these countries at the beginning of this year, asking HCTs to answer a number of questions through through um, through process defined by each country in terms of coming together as a as a humanitarian country team or as clusters to identify how the protection policy has been implemented. Now, a big part of that exercise included reflection on HCT protection strategies. So that was um, really useful in terms of then using those reflections and input from those countries as part of this review. In addition, 
uh, we reviewed the HCT protection strategies of, of the 10 countries and uh, the, also looked at uh, most, well, most of the HCT country uh, strategies that are, uh, sorry, protection strategies that are on the GPC website. So that there was also a brief review of all of those that are currently up on the website, which I also urge everyone to have a look at because it's very useful. So the process was a desk review and using the findings from the HCT reflections exercise. This is not an evaluation and so it wasn't set up uh, to be uh, an exercise which um, evaluates the, the HCT protection strategies. It's much more about identifying insights from looking at this range of strategies. So um, just then this is the very briefly set out uh, list of insights from that review uh, and there's more detail in the report uh, so so you'll find a, a more detailed um, explanation for each one of these points but just overall thinking about it and you'll be familiar i'm sure with this from your country work some of the common insights that came out of reviewing the strategies the de development process of protection strategies, especially the ones we looked at in particular, but mostly have been led by uh, senior PROCAP advisors that are deployed usually for a limited time uh, or senior protection colleagues or in some operations the by the protection cluster. But it, it's been very um, limited in terms of getting other clusters, other actors involved in the process from, from the ones that we reviewed. The second insight is about prote protection risk analysis. Now, there's a lot of discussion about analysis, about data collection, how we do it, best practice, that it needs to be continuous. But what's coming out from looking at the strategies is that there's often very long risk analysis um, and they have a, a great list of risks included. This is useful, but it has made it then difficult to identify what are protection priorities and also in some cases it's made it difficult to differentiate the protection cluster or protection sector and AOR strategies in the humanitarian response plan and to differentiate that or those from the HCT protection strategy and so they've sort of all merged into one uh, making it confusing at times to, to really pick out what are the HCT specific protection priorities in a country. And also um, connected to that is the collective protection outcomes. Some strategies have protection outcomes and some don't. Sometimes they're just uh, defined or set out as objectives or uh, goals um, or just priorities. But the outcomes, they're a range. Sometimes they're very, very high level. So it would be almost impossible to achieve them within a year or two years, um, the time frame of the strategy. Sometimes they're outcome level, so a little bit more realistic, but it's not really clear what's intended, um, what's the intention in terms of what could be achieved by the, by the HCT uh, collectively working together. And, and also, again, how those are different from the HRP, if that's relevant. When it comes to implementation, I'm sure you'll all be familiar with this, it, there isn't um, specific resourcing usually for implementation of HCT protection strategies. Some do refer to percentage of cluster budgets being used for centrality of protection, but when followed up, it, this hasn't really, um, we haven't really seen how this has been done in practice. It's a, it's a good intention, but hasn't actually been taken up in practice. Usually there is not a specific um, capacity in terms of staffing working only on the HCT protection strategy or as part of a terms of reference or job description. And this might be why it usually falls default position, as I'm sure um, uh, will resonate with many of you, falls to the uh, cluster and AORs to take on. Um, in terms of roles and responsibilities, these are often not specific enough. They may be assigned to HC or HCT, which usually means it's not, um, nobody will take them on uh, because it's not a specific agency or a specific role within an agency. And uh, in terms of links to other strategies and plans, some of the strategies, they, they do put out, um, include a list 
of other strategies and plans in the humanitarian response that are relevant to the HCT protection strategy, but very few set up concrete activities or ways that the two are connected. Uh, and I'm, I think we're familiar that there are many strategies and plans in each operation, and it can be difficult sometimes to differentiate what are the value of the different plans, how do they come together, and then connected to the implementation, how are these actually implemented, monitored, and updated or adjusted. Many of the HCT protection strategies, they are initially set out for time frames of one year or two year with the idea that they will be updated based on implementation or, or monitoring of progress. Very few are, are actually updated within the time period uh, set. And so they can seem to be a bit out of date, especially when it comes to the action plans that accompany this, the strategy. So that's just a, a sort of brief overview of some of the insights of reviewing the HCT protection strategies. I hope those uh, make sense and you can connect to a lot of those. So then I'm gonna come to the recommendations. So looking at all of those um, insights, some of those experiences, what, what have we recommended as a result? Again, the detail of these is set out in the report. So I, I've just summarized them here to, to not take up too much of the time. Um, so the first point is about having a strategic approach to the centrality of protection. So one of the, um, rec the first sort of re main recommendation, which really is a, encapsulates all, all the recommendations underneath as well, but it's about not fixating too much on the HCT protection strategy as a standalone document in the form that they currently exist. It's more about using it as a process to have a framework under which the HCT can have some specific protection priorities that it that it looks at how the, the humanitarian actors can collectively come together and work with other actors beyond the humanitarian scope to achieve a set of outcomes, which should allow the HCT to be much more agile. So when thematic issues come up or geographic issues come up, they can form part of its HC, the HCT protection priorities. The, 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 the um, strategies to date have been quite static. And the idea is to have a much more flexible approach and also to specify what are issues that are protection related that the HCT and the humanitarian coordinator should be addressing, should use their comparative advantage. What is the value of them coming up to HCT level? Because if there are things that are already covered by the HRP or covered by the protection sector or by AOR strategies, there is an argument that they do not need to be included in the HCT protection strategy. It's not just a list of things that are happening. It should be a way to, as going back to the IASC principle statement, a way to inform humanitarian decision making and response. So a strategic approach more than just a document or a, an end product of a strategy. Then um, the next recommendation is about analysis. Of course, we have to include analysis because, it, in fact, all of the um, all of the the insights they all come back to this point about identifying what are the priorities, what are the issues, the risks that we want to reduce as a humanitarian community. What do we want to come together collectively and work on? What are what are the outcomes? And to do this, it would make sense as has happened and is happening in you know currently with sort of developing a more inter-sector approach. So not a, a multi-sector approach where every sector, every cluster does its own analysis and then it's put together, but actually an inter-sector uh, approach where analysis, data is collected and an analysis done where protection is at the heart of that, not just as a standalone. I mean, there's also a standalone component of protection, but but thinking how protection fits into data collection and analysis uh, as core to everything else. That's the starting point for having it as central. Then the protection priorities that this has come up a lot um, in terms of how do we limit the number and the HCT protection strategy guidance. It really refers to the HCT having a um, a process that's defined at country level in terms of how 
do we collectively identify protection priorities? Going back to the point that the, it's not just a list of protection issues, because those are probably covered in the HRP already. How does the HCT define what its priorities are? And what is the process so that if there are three priorities defined for the next 12 months, but um, uh, something comes up like the COVID-19 response, do we? how do we adjust to define, uh, to, to then adjust the HCT protection strategy or strategic approach to take in the COVID-19 response uh, at HCT level. How do we define the protection priorities and to use that uh, methodology every single time so that it isn't a competing uh, list of priorities, but ones that we've all agreed are, are, are those that the HC and HCT should be leading on. Advocacy as a key activity. So this has come up quite a lot that it's uh, strategically it's useful and I, I think this is done at most countries, but it's more about having a coherent approach to have um, advocacy, which is a big part of protection work. Uh, and reducing protection risks and, and achieving protection outcomes to use the HCT and HC as a strategic um, platform for having a joint approach to advocacy. And that's what the place that, that that fits is under this umbrella of centrality of protection at HCT level. In terms of uh, accountability for implementation, this comes back to the roles and responsibilities. So really about being more precise. Is, is it good enough to have a working group? The recommendation is to have a working group that is multidisciplinary, ideally led by protection specialised and non-protection specialised actors. Um, and to have a defined role in terms of an action plan and roles and responsibilities of who is going to take on the different activities that will lead to achieving protection outcomes. And ideally, those should be um, separate to those in the protection in the HRP. It, that, but if it's identified that HCT protection priorities do overlap or connect with those in the HRP, that's okay, but it just needs to be set out in that way so the, the work is not duplicated. And then connected to the roles and responsibilities is having greater involvement of our development peace um, security colleagues. How do we do that? How do we understand the frameworks in which they're working connected to the frameworks which humanitarian workers are working? So, for instance, you know, the country analysis that's done uh, in the in the um, development process. How can we formulate centrality of protection to connect with that? How can we bring these strategies and the architecture of the development work together with the humanitarian um, work. And there are a lot of common play, uh, common um, links and bonds, which I'm sure you're familiar with. You know, it could be conflict sensitivity, a human rights approach. There's a lot that's already being done by the development peace security actors that is really can be formulated as protection. Uh, so it's, it's how to tap into that uh, best. And then um, the last recommendation is about having protection central to the HPC. So, that, so if we're serious about, as the protection policy says, having a system-wide commitment to centrality of protection, if we want to collectively achieve uh, meaningful protection outcomes, then it has to be very firmly included in the HNO, the Humanitarian Needs Overview, and the Humanitarian Response Plan. Um, so next slide. So I've just listed, you know, in terms of recommendations, most of them are pitched towards the HCHCT, but the idea is that the global protection cluster with the um, results group one as well, the sub with the subgroup on centrality protection, how can we support to achieve some of these recommendations? I've just listed, you know, some of the actors that you'll be familiar with that will be uh, relevant to, to, to taking on a lot of these recommendations. And in some countries, these steps have already are being taken or improvements are being made because some countries are on their third iteration of the HCT protection strategy. So there's a lot of uh, lessons learned and um, adjustments being made at country level. Uh, I just, in terms of, I thought I'd take out the protection sector AORs, just maybe this is what you're already doing, but thinking about what is the role of the protection sector. Um, and I just wanted to start by saying, in terms of the HCT protection strategies, again, it is important to think of how these are separate. The strategy at HCT level is separate 
to the protection sector AOR strategies and the HRP strategic objectives. There may be connections, but the idea is not that they just duplicate what already exists. And that's why having a more strategic approach at HCT level should take into account what else is being done. In terms of the role of the protection sector, the cluster, the AORs, um, a lot is said about all the responsibility falling to the protection colleagues in terms of HCT protection strategy. And historically, this has been the case. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And I'm sure we, we can discuss those and you will have a lot of um, ideas and thoughts about that and experiences. In terms of systematically, the way it's set out, the contribution and support to HCT protection strategies, there is a specific role for the for the protection cluster and that and the AORs that's set out in the protection policy, which very usefully explains and uh, sets out each uh, actor's role and responsibility. But the, the big picture um, involvement of the protection sector is the things that you will have been doing, but it's the data and information collection, sharing and management. Now, it doesn't mean that the protection cluster has to do all that, but it's about supporting and um, providing, it could be initially or, or on an ongoing basis, the technical support to get that up and running, to have the identification of protection risks very firmly in the uh, system-wide data and information collection efforts. Again, the, the importance of the in-depth and integrating protection analysis. By the way, these points are taken from the protection policy, policy, so they're set out in more detail there. And the idea is that the protection analysis is not a one-off. So all that work that's done into, of protection monitoring, of collecting uh, information about changes in context, uh, how people affected by crisis are coping, their, co their vulnerabilities, how those might change in specific circumstances, that's continuous and that's already being done. So, so how does that feed in and help advise the humanitarian country team and the, and the HC? Um, and then this point about defining HCT specific protection priorities. I don't think any country really has had one method of doing this that they keep on using. And what we've seen is this long list of protection priorities It is often uh, there because the idea is that if protection issues are not included at HCT protection strategy level, they will be excluded or they will be considered not important or they won't be funded. And that is not or it should not be the case. So that's why um, that's something we, we could help to define much more and also define the differences about what is HCT specific and what is uh, still very important, but dealt with under the HRP or, or under other strategies. Um, and then the idea about mobilizing other actors and stakeholders. I think we've all got good and bad stories of how we've involved colleagues in protection. And we have a lot of learning there in terms of what has worked and what hasn't. Um, and also identifying, and this is what something, as William mentioned, in, in the next piece of work that I'm focusing on, the centrality of protection review for 2019, the idea is to really work with other clusters, other actors, development actors and colleagues to see how they're already including protection, but it may be by another name. It may not be as specific as set out in the uh, protection policy, but those measures to understand vulnerabilities and risks and react and respond to those do exist, usually just set out in slightly different ways. So thinking much more about how we can connect to that as protection actors. Um, and yes, and then I put other. So I know I've said a lot of things and quite quickly. Um, but the next thing was to have a, a bit of a brainstorming. So I, I don't know, Nancy, if, if that's or William, you're moderating to hand over in terms of um, how to discuss some of these things now based on um, the findings from the review and also your experiences. So thinking about um, your experiences related to HCT protection strategies, what you would like from the global protection cluster and global AORs in terms of support, what would what would be useful? And then also at country level, what's the best way for, for the sector, for the cluster to have a systematic and clear role for HCT protection strategies? Because I know at the moment, it's a lot of work for, for many of you, and that's not really how it's meant to be. So how can we help inform and use this review to reset a little bit in terms of how the HCTs and HCs take on um, the protection strategies that they're responsible for and what you your role would be 
in terms of supporting those on an ongoing basis, but not having to take full responsibility for them. So that was that that was the idea. So and um, William, Nancy, I don't know if I hand over to you for for sort of the discussion. I mean, of course, I'm very uh, I'm here to answer questions and, and participate in the discussion as well. Um. I think William was supposed to moderate, but William, if you want me to go ahead, it's fine. Um, okay, William said for me to go ahead for now. William, do you want to be? Oh, I see that some there's some questions. Yeah, good, good. Oh, sorry, William. That's fine. We can. Thanks, Nancy. We can we can do it in uh, ping ponging. Uh, Elise, go ahead. Uh, a question from you. Hi, good evening. Sorry, I did not mean to derail the meeting with my questions. <laughs> um, well, like it's it's actually uh, two two questions. The first one is on the the duplication of of activities with those already featuring in the HRP. Um, so in Afghanistan, we're currently in the process of revising the the HCT protection strategy because it's quite outdated. It's very impractical. People have been very um, critical of it, and we've got basically two schools of thoughts. Uh, in the working group, some people would like to not basically um, copy activities already featuring in the HRP, saying we need to uh, define other priorities that only the HC and the HCT can address, basically. Whereas some other members of the working group say, no, we should include those HRP activities as well to make sure those agencies doing these activities are held um, uh, um, accountable to the HCT members. So that would be the first question. How do you basically manage that uh, discussion? And the second one on advocacy, would you recommend to include advocacy in the HTT protection strategy or have a separate um, advocacy strategy like some people are pushing for in Afghanistan? Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, okay. Elise. Uh, I'm sure these questions resonate, uh, Dahlia. Before you take the floor, uh, colleagues for questions or brainstorming and uh, 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 and inputs, please either uh, raise your hand or flag it in the chat box uh, that you want to uh, come in. I encourage colleagues uh, on all spectrums of the crisis to come in, uh, new emergencies, uh, protracted emergencies, as well as countries where we have stabilization and development machineries. Uh, I think the experience uh, should be slightly different from, from these type of operations to come in. Dahlia, over to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, just for this, I, 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 in terms of your questions, Elise, um, the, I mean, there's different ways of doing it, but the, in terms of the duplicating, I think that um, reflects what a lot of countries have done because there's an idea that if those points are not included in the protection strategy, they will not, they're not important or they won't be covered um, sufficiently. I think it does depend on the, the HC and the HCT in terms of how they're monitoring the HRP. In terms of accountability, I think we all agree that if something's in the HRP, we're, you know, there is accountability there within it. So, so it shouldn't have to be repeated in the HCT protection strategy, I would say. It having that or or finding ways um, to have the HCT, and the burden for this is not on, on the protection cluster only, but having the HCT have this uh, define a methodology in terms of how, what is an HCT protection priority for that HCT? And if we could agree, if, if, if that's something that could be agreed on, then that could be applied to issues that were put forward as potential priorities. Um, of course, it's easier to say than to do because there are um, agencies see, through, see priorities through the issues that they're working on and they may prioritise based on how they are doing uh, analysis and collecting data. But that's why the idea is for the HCT to be a collective pool of that and of the contributions. It could, you could look at a separate advocacy, maybe it's not a strategy, maybe it's more of an action plan. You know, the strategic point is included in the HCT protection strategy, but the action 
how you're going to make that happen could be it's so important that it really needs to be um you need to have a sort of separate approach to it in terms of how you're going to achieve a, a protection outcome it could be i mean it depends what the advocacy is being used for in general having lots of strategies has not proved to have better protection outcomes i mean I, I i'm saying that anecdotally i have not done a full evaluation but in countries where there are many strategies and plans it doesn't seem to have made it easier to achieve protection outcomes so i don't at least i don't know if that answers or or, or raises more questions but i hope that's helpful in some way at least any uh, rebound? No, that was great. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Elise. I have uh, Aziz uh, from Sudan. Aziz, go ahead. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I just wanted to, to share a little bit of, of our experience of, of uh, following and uh, the implementation of the HCT protection uh, strategy. As you know, uh, apart from the, the strategy uh, document, we have the monitoring framework and we have also uh, localities, agreed localities, where we monitor the implementation of, of the ICT pr protection strategy. However, <clears throat> uh, during the first phase of, of uh, uh, implementation of, of the strategy, uh, it was it was really difficult to collect information on the implementation of the document by different agencies from their main main offices uh, in Sudan. Then we we tried uh, and, and made an effort to to involve their representatives at the protection working group level, collect the related information. However, we found out that some of the agencies uh, are either not aware of the strategy or they remember it only uh, during the, the reporting time. Uh, so it, it, it was difficult and therefore for the second quarter report of the HCT uh, protection strategy, we failed to perform our role as, as the secretariat. And uh, the last, the latest is that we recommended that uh, the, the monitoring framework and the reporting templates uh, are, are reviewed at the AHCT level and in different uh, states where we have the intersector and the AHCT structures uh, working together. So this may give a little bit more, more ownership to, to, to other agencies, especially uh, non-protection uh, mandated agencies and that way we collect uh, uh, more uh, and useful information and at the same time uh, draw their attention on 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 the main elements of of the uh, strategy so this is the latest i have and, and, and just wanted to share with you and seek uh, advice from your side thank you thanks uh, a lot Aziz. uh let me just uh, follow up uh, uh, on your intervention and say, how can we be more helpful uh, in such a process? What would you expect from the Global Protection Cluster and, and the Global AORs? Aziz, uh, did you hear me? Sorry, I, I didn't hear you. Can, can you repeat? Yes, uh, I'm saying uh, thank you for uh, for the explanation of uh, of where you are. Uh, my question is, how can we, from the Global Protection Cluster and the AORs, be helpful to you? What do you expect from us uh, in such a situation? Well. Uh... I, I, I was thinking about uh, about the problem. How how else we can we can uh, we can address uh, the situation? Maybe uh, we didn't get the information because of the restrictions and, and that uh, people are are, are mm, tired of the situation. COVID nineteen restriction 
um, we were also thinking about it that uh, it is because of the, the emergency uh, um, involvement of most of the agencies and in small emergencies here and there in Sudan, maybe because of that, but also thinking that if, if something comes from from uh, from the global uh, protection sector directly to the to the uh, HCRC or even from high ranking colleagues directly to the HCRC or something for, from from a higher structure to the representatives of different UN agencies so that that may may change a little bit the situation because this is uh, after all an issue of, of um, responsibility in, in accountability they have to consider that so uh, other than this I, I i don't have any other recommendation william thank you so much aziz i have lillian followed by yasmin then samir lillian over to you uh, hello everyone. I am Aziz's colleague in Sudan. Um, I wanted just to contribute a little bit. Uh, there is a plus and minus from our side. So basically we have an RCHC that took on this uh, role of uh, the HCT protection uh, strategy very seriously, um, getting it um, um, endorsed and also establishing the task force uh, and that task force has been uh, developed the action plan, the implementation framework and to be honest it is for now more of our from the uh, protection sector and the AOR's responsibility towards following it up and reminding everyone but I think what would be helpful is um, is to have, I'm not sure it's there, uh, but uh, for, for, um, pardon me if I did not read it in any background document, to have some bit of clarity with regards to um, like the an action plan that uh, really uh, clearly shows the accountability to come from the the HC, and then also how the HC can be able to utilize the the, the HC team members. So far we have the, we have the RC HC. So there's a bit of confusion sometimes when we say uh, the implementation. So it ends up being a UNCT or UN. Uh, partners that are more involved in the in the following following up and the implementation and we really have less uh, inputs uh, coming in from the NGOs and this is something that we are struggling with so um, it may be too much to ask um, and, and sorry for that but I think um, based on the lessons learned that uh, we have seen from other countries it would be helpful if there's the in the package there is something that uh, really helps with the um, ongoing implementation and the reporting to be more on the HC, the HCT side with the clear roles for the HC. I know it is somewhere there, but it's not really easily interpreted in, in the country. So it ends up being heavy on our side from the GPC, from the protection sector and AORs. Thank you. Uh, I hope I was clear. If, if there's a follow on question, you can ask me. Thank you. Thank you, Lilian. Uh, loud and clear. I have Yasmin followed by Samir and then Marie Emily. Yasmin, over to you. Thank you, William. Thank you, Dalia, very much. That was super interesting. I have a quick question and apologies. I'm you have um, referred to some to uh, uh, to some elements, some answers to my questions, but I, I'm just interested to hear your views based on the review of how we can move away from um, in the second generation of HCT strategies, how we can move away from a policy tick box exercise to a more impact driven process. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Yasmin. Uh, also, quick question. So we move to Samir, then Marie Emily, and we take a first stock with you, Dalia, before the uh, rest. Samir, over to you. 
Thank you, William. Um, based on the experience uh, from uh, from whole of Syria perspective, uh, I think we we had the leadership, which is the RCHC based in Damascus and the regional HC based in Amman and the deputy regional HC based in Gaziantep, who are part of the whole of Syria leadership. They had separate uh, protection strategies for themselves last year as they were not able to have a combined uh, protection strategy for the SSG, which is the senior most uh, advisory group for the response. Uh, however, the problem was that over a period of time, it became less about the about the leadership. So the RCHC or the RHC or the deputy RHC feeding back on the efforts undertaken as part of their advocacy in line with their identified protection priorities, which the protection sector helped them to come up with and, and prioritize. And it uh, consistently became more about asking for more updates from the protection sector on those, those on those very things. So I'm wondering how maybe part of it is also a lack of understanding on part of the HCTs or on part of the RCHC and it's uh, and uh, RCs and HCs about how a protection strategy for the HCT can work and what is the role of the protection sector in supporting and where the accountability for it lies. And I'm wondering if there is a way in which the GPC can help facilitate this understanding so that it's clear that the protection sector supports the HCT in coming up with the protection strategy, but then the accountability for it lies which, with the HCT and should not become an additional task for the protection sector to continue to report on those things which the protection sector is not advocating on, but is actually seeking leadership support to advocate on. Loud and clear, Samir. Uh, thanks for the intervention. Uh, Marie, Emily, and then followed by, uh, back to you, Dahlia, for a first uh, interjection. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Marie from uh, Mali. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you, uh, Dalia, for this presentation. We are going to present the, the HCT protection strategy in less than an hour in Mali, so it's really a very nice warm-up uh, for me. Um, just to share the experience here, we, we started um, the, the drafting of the HCT protection strategy more than a year ago, almost a year and a half ago, in March 2019. So it's been a very, very long uh, consultation process, and we've had two ProCap mission coming uh, to support us in this exercise. And one of the things that we've learned is, is that um, you, you can't push for a protection strategy at the, at the level of the HCT without having the, um, a strong protection cluster in place who is able to provide the analysis that is required. And so this is why I think it has taken so long in Mali is that um, we, the foundations, basically were not there to take uh, the protection uh, discussion at a higher level. And so I, I was wondering if we could maybe also include that in um, um, as part of one of the lessons learned is how, how much uh, the protection analysis and the work of the protection cluster is, is um, instrumental in taking uh, the protection discussion to a higher level. And for me, the, the protection pyramid that the, the Interagency Standing Committee came up with makes a lot of sense. And, and I, I feel, at least for me, it's been really useful to look at this pyramid and to see what needs to be done before we achieve or we are able to uh, to come up to the level of the of the HCT. Um, and as Samir was saying, I think there is still an assumption, even among ourselves, that this centrality of protection, the statement and the policy that you were mentioning are well known and understood. And we've had some pushback from from the some from from agencies, even protection agencies, not understanding the difference between an HCT protection strategy and a, a protection cluster strategy. So I think the GPC could also help us in making clear um, and uh, making sure that this understanding is 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 well well known and that this I'm sorry I'm coming always to this protection pyramid but for me it makes so much sense and it has really helped me to understand the different levels of responsibility towards uh, protection and and I feel that uh, there's still work to be done on on making sure that those policies statements and tools are, are being um, understood by our leadership and even among ourselves by protection coordinators thank you so much Thank you, Marie. That was uh, good, and good luck in uh, your next meeting. 
Uh, I want to, to give the floor back to Dahlia for some uh, reactions to kind of uh, relaunch uh, some of the comments. She'll be followed by Yasin. And I would like to hear uh, from some AORs colleagues uh, with us uh, if you're uh, in uh, how this experience come to you, as well as some of the operations that have stabilization and peace machinery in country. Uh, that would also be great to hear from you. So, but first, a pit stop with you, Dalia. Any uh, initial reactions and answers? Thanks, William. Yes, sure. And thanks uh, to Yasmin, Samir, and Maria Emily. Really good points. Just to um, reassure, hopefully, everyone that this review has not been widely shared and disseminated. And actually, it, this is sort of just touching base with you all as the as the people involved in, in so much of the work. It's a starting point. So don't think that these ideas and recommendations are all in the sight of HCs, RCs, and, and they're just not uh, applying them or it, they're not uh, agreeing with them. It's it's pretty new way of thinking in some way. And that's uh, why we need to come together and think about how to get that much more on their radar. In uh, So Yasmin asked about how not to just have the policy tick box. And maybe actually the answers to the other questions, or not answers, reflections, I don't think I can um, claim to have the answers, but just ideas, will answer uh, or reflect um, contribute to that idea. Because in some ways, and we have to recognise this, having the protection strategy at HCT level is in itself a huge step from where we were a few years ago. Uh, and that has to be acknowledged and recognized, even though we're already wanting to improve and uh, learn from our experiences and move on to another place. But having that and having protection or centrality of protection as one of the four mandatory um, obligations of the humanitarian country team, that is an achievement. Um, although, of course, the operationalization and implementation is the next step. So we have moved in many ways. And I think a lot of colleagues acknowledge that. We have the luxury of experience now because we've had a few years of trying this out. And I think that experience in Mali of it taking over a year to draft and the consultation process probably sort of shows how difficult and why these strategies end up being quite static because it takes so long to put them together. And they're works of art in many ways. But then when it comes to implementing and updating, I mean, the idea of going through a one year process to do that is, is not something that, that any of us really want to go through. Uh, so let me. So in terms of whole of Syria and, and the lack of understanding, I think um, this is coming out again and again. The idea that who is responsible, where do the roles um, sit, and it always comes back to the protection cluster. So what I think we could do with this uh, review, and, and and it's something you know Williams pushing for as well in terms of the advocacy and how we can come together to do that, is how can we raise this much more at a policy, well, global level, but then also to feed into country level in terms of how the protection cluster is not responsible for all of this. It hasn't worked so far for us to say as protection cluster colleagues to tell all the other clusters or to tell the HCNRC, no, it's your responsibility. Unfortunately, that hasn't worked so well. Um, and so maybe this is something we need to raise as well with the interagency standing committee and the results group in terms of operational response, because it needs to come from a higher level. Uh, and and then, you know, what we're doing is trying to provide the technical support to that at country level. Um, the other thing that's connected to that, and I think it came out with the Mali point, is that the protection analysis in itself is a very valuable commodity. It is something that all the you know, HCTs want and HCs, you know, demand these updates and regular input. Yet maybe we need to think as well as 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 the protection cluster at global level and also to support at country level how to use this valuable commodity a bit more in terms of setting the narrative of how to identify HCT protection priorities. Because if we can show that the cluster strategies are already covering a lot of the, the, the issues that have come up in the analysis, we could then try to find ways of being more strategic, more tactical in advocating 
relating to the HCT and it may be directly to the HCT but also work being done also with NGO forums, um, with the intercluster mechanism, with other parts of the architecture to, to have a stronger strategic approach to pushing what the HCT priorities are. And I think the other thing is it's going to take some time. A lot of HCTs think that um, the having an update protection is centrality of protection. And so maybe we also need to think how to hold back a little bit in terms of doing this. I know it's easy to say, and this is something maybe we need to bring up with the cluster lead agencies and, and, and co-leads as well, because we are providing so much work and material and it's uh, taking a lot of time. I'm sure he, you know that it's your time and your efforts. It's such valuable stuff, but it might not be in, it might not be used as you as intended. And what's happening is that the update is becoming the uh, the result and it's not actually leading to strategic decision making. So I I can't um, give a magical answer, but what I would suggest is that one of the starting points is that when you're entering in the process of um, developing a protection strategy or participating in developing a protection strategy and also for the implementation, it could be that you reach out at that point to the global protection cluster to see how the global protection cluster can support or use other experiences from other countries to help you so that you don't get stuck doing something that is not quite what uh, is intended uh, or what or is the best use of your time or that leads to duplication but I would I mean I'll I'll pass over to William now because maybe one of the things is to have a bit more of a um, brainstorming to think how creatively the global cluster can support more in terms of this strategic uh, take up for HCs and RCs that centrality of protection is not the work of the protection cluster only and to define more what the protection cluster NAOR role is as opposed to allowing it to be defined at country level by by HCTs and HCs and there's probably a role for the lead agencies there as well in terms of defining that. So sorry, that was a little bit of a stream of consciousness, but I, I, I took all your points. I think they're so valid and it really shows how in some ways your energies and efforts are not being allowed to be used as efficiently and effectively as possible. And I think we can take that as uh, one of the things we raise when disseminating and using this review as an advocacy tool to try to change or help change the mindset of how centrality of protection is implemented by HCs and HCTs. Back to you, William. Thanks a lot, Dalia. Uh, there is already a couple of suggestions in terms of uh, uh, our role as GPC to clarify the difference between uh, HCT strategy and protection cluster strategy. I will uh, touch base to these points uh, towards the end and the wrap up. Now I have a lineup of Yasin followed by David Garcia, uh, Najiba, Ilona, and Lionel. Uh, Yasin, the floor is yours. Um, hi, William. Hi, Dalia. Miss you. How are you? Well, uh, two things uh, from involving with protection strategy before I learn. Um, I learn we have to be a little bit also to to remind ourselves as a protection cluster in the field, we are practical, basically or operational. Uh, body or working group trying to see where is the gap and implement to to the needs and sometimes I felt we are um, like learning from before I felt we are we were pushing a lot to to make the HCT accountable or to have the protection strategy in place where we really don't have a strong programming when it's come to uh, to provide evidence-based um, information, like there is where is the protection issue, what needs to be done, etc. So we 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 assuming sometimes that which is normal in in an, in a conflict situation, there is a protection issues that need to be responded to, but we were in somehow uh, not able to provide evidence um, enough evidences, which is based on assessment and feedback and not two or three people sitting somewhere saying there is a protection need and analyzing it. And this is where we, we have to find ourselves. We can buy or sell our um, messages or put uh, or do more advocacy with the HCT. So the HCT is it, strong when we have, uh, <coughs> sorry, 
<coughs> evidences when we have assessment when we can see the protection needs and the impact. And I think we have to start from there. Before we are pushing the ICT to adopt the protection strategy, we have to look to in in a specific situation how we become become better or identifying protection issue and provide evidences to the HCT. Uh, and also, um, we also always have, uh, I agree with that, and somehow when we also have to reduce the objective, what we are trying to achieve in, in the protection strategy uh, and focus on what we can achieve, because also sometime HCT, they feel, uh, or they reject us because they feel the protection is too much. It's pushing, uh, putting like uh, protection everywhere, etc. So we have to be smart in, in also uh, focusing or starting from easy to, to achieve. Uh, and that's also, we link it to the capacity of the HCT in the country. Uh, the sensitivity, the ongoing situation. We also to do some analysis, what can be achieved, what cannot be achieved. Otherwise, we will produce a document. It will never be used or HCT member will avoid to use it or the leadership because of the sensitivity, because of the situation in the ground. So we also we have to be realistic uh, in, in the ground and HCT in the protection sector or cluster, what we can do, what we cannot do or what the HCT is ready to 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 take and 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 fight to, to achieve and and this also another issue and the third thing also i found it it's um sometimes things go well depend of the protection advisor who come to the field from uh, uh, procap or no cap uh, uh, it's also sometimes depend of this person, of the qualification of this person, of the way it can interact with the HCT member and the relation with the protection sector. So this is also, it, it, I suggest also to look when we look to the evaluation, how was uh, the impact of, of the person who been sent to the specific country to support the HCT to, to develop a protection strategy, which is I saw it some some sometime is working very well, depend of this person and their background. And sometimes things go wrong actually uh, be, because of, of also understanding their role and what they can do and their relation with the protection sector and also relation with the HCT or with a specific organization. It's also important to revise the TOR for the uh, global expertise who's supporting the country program in developing the protection strategy and to see it does need to be evaluated what what rule they can like where is their rule what they can do what they cannot do and the relation between sector and the HCT. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yasin. I have uh, David Garcia followed by Najiba, then Ilona. David Garcia. Uh, David, can you hear me? If not, let me quickly uh, David. So there we have two couple of questions from David. Uh, how to increase the commitment of the agencies and organizations that are members of the humanitarian team? Also, considering that there are less and less resources allocated to these response plans. So what's uh, basically David is, is uh, David is asking, What's the incentive uh, for the agencies uh, to be part of it? Najiba, can you just mute for a moment? I'll, I'll get to you. Uh, then uh, David is saying a few years ago, Interaction carried out a study in Colombia and shared some specific recommendations. But when we tried to create a system to measure the impact of uh, protection, the majority of members voted against the proposal uh, that would allow the operation to better 
measure the impacts of protection. The current HRP monitoring tools do not guarantee the measurement of strategic protection agreement either. So uh, I think the question here, Dalia, is how how do we go about measuring this impact and uh, uh, and how do we sensitize everyone to go along these lines? Uh, the second question from David, who's based in Colombia, uh, how to improve strategic coordination between different humanitarian response plans in countries where there is more than one? I think uh, Colombia is a case in point. In the case of Colombia, there is a plan that responds to the situation of armed conflict and a plan that responds to the crisis of Venezuelan migrants and refugees. Unfortunately, these plans do not share the same coordination platforms, and one of them is not part of the YASC structure. So what's the role of the strategy uh, in this case? Uh, so uh, thank you very much for the points, uh, David. Uh, Najib, Najiba, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, William and colleagues. It is really very most, I mean, interesting uh, discussion because for us in Afghanistan, uh, we, we also had some, some issues like, you know, the strategy was draft, and then it took a little bit more time to to implement the objective or the work plan. So and then it was very uh, slow, like later by later. And we were as a protection cluster asked, like this is, a, for example, our job that we should uh, monitor the progress or we should have a, a discussion, like you know, uh, with the um, involved agencies that, and especially we should uh, report to the HCT about the progress. I was thinking on that time that uh, is it will be. I, I think uh, this is only like you know suggestion. Is it okay like to create a task force at the country level, for example, at that HCT level? to monitor the strategy progress, the work plan, and also to report to the HCT time to time, like the suggestion, like while uh, if there is any obstacle that we cannot implement the strategy or if the progress is, is slow or delay, or uh, like, I mean, the task force, and then also to coordinate uh, about the strategy review if there is need, like, you know, the Afghanistan strategy, when it was draft, like most of the objective was very out of date and we didn't have like proper uh, you know progress report to report to hct and that 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 objective some of them were like already achieved but the report was not there so all the, the protection cluster work on the strategy i mean we had some presentation to hct about which which of the objective is in which level but still like you know protection cluster as other colleague also mentioned it's a lot of work for the protection cluster to monitor the overall process and then also the work plan and then uh, coordinate with the relevant agencies and even in some cases some of objective are most rela relevant also to the government so i was thinking if there is a task force and then the task force take all this responsibility and report to HCT time to time and then uh, also the progress i don't know if the suggestion is okay i'm just seeking advice like if it is okay or possible in in some of the countries thank you so much over to you william okay. thank you very much uh, najiba i move to ilona followed by lionel and jack ilona Thank you. So as long as I'm here on that, well, okay, two things. So one, I just wanted to jump onto what was previously commented on the sensitization of HCTs and indeed HCs overall on the con the concept of centrality of protection. Um, this, this is, yes, this is really key. It seems like Sometimes uh, not everyone can be on the same page on the, the entire definition of the concept and the understanding of accountability for its incorporation across the entire HCT. And if there's any kind of sensitization that can happen at a quite high level on this, um, this could be good. Although from our level, what has been happening many times, if there's any core issues, um, the protection cluster has marshaled all of the protection-related 
uh, members of the HCT to kind of collectively do advocacy on any issue. And so that has had some impact. However, it's, you know, nonetheless, it's a great, um, it's great to think that potentially um, something senior could happen whereby um, centrality of protection would kind of be in the front of people's minds as something that they have as, you know, part of their collective responsibility as HGT members as well. But then the second comment was going to be about the issue of implementation matrix and working group and noting the recommendation to have a working group. I believe, if I'm not wrong, there was discussion here in South Sudan of a working group. However, I'm sure it's the same in every operation. The multiplicity of working groups, coordination mechanisms, different group, subgroups, small groups growing out of other small groups, et cetera, that in order to avoid too much of a proliferation, um, but at the same time also not have the protection cluster be exclusively responsible for all this tracking, as other colleagues have also mentioned, are there any alternate additional suggestions on that? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ilona. Uh, Lionel, followed by Shaq, and I believe if I don't have any further speakers, back to you, uh, Dalia, maybe for uh, initial wrap-up. Uh, Lionel, go ahead. Yeah, Lionel speaking. Uh, thank you for giving me the floor. No, I I just agree that uh, uh, um, it, there is no uh, currently no clarity about uh, who's doing, uh, who should do what, uh, especially when it comes to centrality of protection. So I think that uh, maybe uh, uh, there is also uh, there is already existing documentation uh, quite extensive. Uh, so maybe like very strong messages, maybe uh, one pager with some. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, schemes uh, about uh, who is doing well. Uh, there is another point uh, when it comes to that. Uh, of course, uh, centrality of protection, uh, this is a responsibility of the HCT, but uh, of course, other uh, uh, cluster sectors uh, have a role to play. So, uh, such uh, advocacy or clarification, I would uh, say, uh, it would be good also to be extended. Uh, I mean, it's extended to, uh, to their. Uh, the cluster. Uh, the simpler, the better. And on that one, I would uh, also insist on that. the fact that the multiplicity of working group, etc., doesn't work, uh, according to me. It's, I would rather say that uh, it's a killer. Uh, we are moving from a meeting to another one. I think that the real problem is the lack of uh, a clear strategy, uh, especially uh, based on like uh, result-based management. Uh, with clear uh, 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 outcomes, uh, and from there to outputs, we are going to activities with some specific indicators. If we manage to get some specific indicators, uh, there is no need to have uh, uh, like uh, too uh, too uh, often uh, uh, meetings where, at the end of the day, nothing really happens uh, because nothing can be tracked uh, because there is no. Uh, I mean, because at the end, very often strategy is just uh, um, an addition of words of, as it was said in the review, uh, very uh, generic uh, uh, outcomes or two specific outcomes, etc. So I think uh, there are wider question around that because this is also true for uh, the HPC, uh, etc. How we consider result-based management. So. Uh, Probably one other thing is like how do we consider uh, the professional development uh, and the, the training? I mean, protection is uh, uh, is nothing that we can improvise. So I was also wondering if there is any way to uh, reinforce that what is at the end of the day a change uh, with some solid uh, curriculum, some training uh, online or not online, but uh, something like that. Thank you very much. Over. Thank you, Lionel. In which operation are you? Oh, yes, sorry. I didn't introduce myself. So, uh, uh, Najaya and uh, Najaya. I am the, yeah, my, my action coordinator. My action. No, thanks. Uh, nice meeting you. Thanks a lot for your comments. Much appreciated. Jack, followed by 
Anne-Marie as the last intervention. Chuck. Thank you for the floor. Uh, I'm sorry, John, later, but uh, I was in another meeting, uh, actually with the FCT. Um, maybe two points from my side. Um, I think probably we have to uh, reassess our way as potential cluster, uh, I mean, in the field, uh, uh, of working with uh, ProCAP advisor or maybe an advisor, potential advisor from another, uh, another body who, who used to be deployed to support the, the FCT. Uh, we can see it as the way of uh, questioning or uh, assess the personality of uh, the deployed uh, person. But I think probably we have also to, uh, to assess our way of collaborating and working uh, with those, those, uh, those advisors. Uh, in our case, we had two deployments, I think. Uh, yeah, two deployments of workup advisors, yet it uh, the HT did not finalize the, the, the strategy. So uh, when it's like that, I think we need to have a two-way evaluation assessment from uh, their side, but also from our side. And maybe what we can, how we can prepare their deployment, what we can, what we should have to achieve or to better prepare uh, the mission, etc. But probably we have to, to reassess this. Um, and to be honest, the we used to take a great part of the work as protection cluster, which was our our case uh, in Central African Republic. But maybe uh, depending on how we manage this, uh, and it's not only a question of TORs, but it's on a practical way how we work with those guys. Um, my second point would be, uh, you know, regarding the FCT, the FC, etc., cetera, is uh, how we do organize our inter uh, with FCT members and, and, and with the FC. Um, I think it helps better than sensitize UN uh, UN agency heads, uh, representatives, or NGOs, head of missions, etc. But it's on what we bring as discussion. In the, sometimes uh, it's the HC who requests uh, a given presentation or uh, on a given region, etc. Sometimes we need as protection cluster also to to initiate discussion, to ask to give a presentation. On, on some uh, some topics, and then during the discussion, trying to uh, you know to uh, to to make HCT members uh, um, accountable for uh, some some action to, to request them to take uh, um, advocacy mission in the field, etc. So uh, I think how we we do interact with them help us uh, could help us bringing them and sensitizing them to uh, to be accountable for uh, for some uh, for some uh, uh, some specific question or or points and maybe my like my last point is on the task force etc all of these to uh, uh, for the monitoring of the strategy actually we have had a, a task force in uh, in Sierra but to be honest it uh, it was weak and it does not help uh, much. Why? Maybe uh, uh, really we need to uh, to see it in a deep way. But yeah, to to establish a, a, a task force is one thing, but to make it uh, to make it functional, it's uh, operational. I mean, it's uh, it, it's another challenge. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jacques. Um, clear points. Anne-Marie, you're the last speaker. Make it count. <laughs> I will try. Uh, no, actually, I just wanted to bring in a point about the task force or, or working group to, uh, I guess, implement the strategy. 
So we did have that here in Libya response. Uh, we created a working group uh, made of HCT members uh, to write the work plan and sort of the timeline and such. It initially started off quite uh, promising and we were able to engage people who maybe weren't regularly engaging with us, which was, was quite, quite great. Uh, however, the majority of all, all of the work, I'd say, I should say, uh, fell to us at the at the sector. Uh, and then at the end of the day, we were unable to actually pass the work plan. Uh, the HCT never ended up uh, finalizing it, which made it particularly difficult because we put in a ton of hours and a ton of work into this document that was then never uh, finalized. And I think this does echo some of the issues that some of my colleagues have been raising about sort of the ownership of this strategy. Uh, that needs to be a bit of a rethinking around who does this strategy belong to in a way, because I think it was often pushed to us as the protection sector uh, saying, well, this is a protection issue. Uh, so protection should take the lead, which completely negates the purpose of a centrality of protection uh, strategy or work plan. So I think just to first say the work plan, the working group can be successful, uh, but at the end of the day, it's an ownership issue. And if the HCT are unwilling to take ownership of the strategy, then they're not going to necessarily follow through on the work plan that we create. Uh, so a bit, a bit of a bro, pro and con, I suppose. Thanks a lot, Anne-Marie. Dahlia, you had seven speakers since your last <laughs> intervention and you've got four minutes to wrap it wow. up wow so give it your best shot oh thank you i'm going to try very hard but actually i'm going to use a bit of time to say thank you so much for everybody that's participated in sharing these experiences because this is as yasin is saying it's all about practical and operational points and um this is going to help as well when we're developing the guidance on HCT protection strategies. I hope it helps to think that the HCT protection strategies, as they currently stand, doesn't have to be how they continue to be. And a lot of our discussion has been based around how they currently are, and that makes sense because we're very familiar with them. And the last five years has really been developing a very similar version of protection strategy, and we've got really good at it. What we haven't been able to keep up with is the implementation, and maybe that's the, the project for the next five years. Of course, risks are being reduced in the work that the humanitarian work that's being done. So it's not as though I, we, I was speaking with one donor recently who thought that if something wasn't in the HCT protection strategy, it means that no protection is being done. And so that is uh, really important that we clarify the HCT protection strategy is not the only place that identifies how people can be protected. And I have taken this point to follow up on with GPC colleagues is about how to uh, and come back with, for more discussion and, and defining with you uh, colleagues, uh, with your operational knowledge, how do we define uh, differentiate much more clearly the, the different lev, uh, strategies on protection and what is it that makes something HCT level. If we look at the HCT as a place for a strategic approach and not just to produce this document that has been produced again and again in the last few years and then the action plan and stuff, that should, the idea is not to create more working groups and more task forces. The It's a, to um, make what exists better or more efficient even to reduce the number of working groups and meetings, because there's no point having a whole set of layers and processes if it's not achieving what we intend for it to achieve. I know you know that, but that's what's really coming out from this review uh, and from our experience so far. Incentive, what does incentivize any agency or any uh, uh, actor to participate and that's a range of things. It could be funding, it could be what's included if, you know, uh, through the HPC funding processes, so through the common funding? Is there a requirement that centrality of protection participation is there? Do we need to get the donors to push this point? We recognise that just saying it repeatedly to the HC and HCT that it is their overall responsibility is not resulting in a sharing of the work or a distribution of the work. And actually, it's 
meaning that the protection cluster is having again and again to take the burden. So I, I've noted that as something we need to work on. And maybe this review can be a tool uh, to do that. And also through this results group that we've talked about quite a bit, they are rethinking how to, um, as William said, to come up, we're trying to come up with indicators of how you measure centrality of protection. So thinking of incentives there for agencies to participate is something that um, that we can take on. In terms of the working groups, I mean, one idea is not to have something separate that ends up default being the protection cluster. Maybe it's just about having a, a point on the intercluster meetings that go on that's that's looking at how to bring centrality of protection together or the H sorry the HCT protection strategy implementation uh, it sounds like there's a lot of work to do whether that's sensitization or advocacy in terms of stressing the reasons for having this protection strategy because what's come out and I think this is the overall point that's come out is there's so much effort going on to producing this strategy that we haven't really had much space to think about what it hopes to achieve in the implementation implementation of it I've also noted the points on the the ProCap advisors or having other senior colleagues come in the sustainability point how does having colleagues come in for a short amount of time help is it it could be that it it, it, it does you know it's more of a hindrance so we need to factor that in um so i think i'll i'll pass back to william just to say that i've noted all your points but i think if there's one thing to take away and i would love to re um convene to talk about this is envisaging if you can think about protection centrality of protection as a strategic um, issue for the HCT to deal with. Don't think of it as the strategies that currently exist. I mean, I know you have to in your current work because they exist and you have to do all the work around it. But if you could see it as something else, that's what we want to try and capture. How can we get that vision into um, the mindset? Because at the moment we got stuck in the in the tick box producing strategies as the end result. But we want to move away from that. So how can we do that together? If any, you know, if if, if we're thinking creatively. So I'll, I'll pass back to William. I'm sorry that I didn't answer everything directly, but I'm also around to support for the next couple of months if individual questions come up. Back to you. Thank you, William. Thank you very much, Dahlia. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues, uh, for a very dynamic and excellent uh, conversation. We've carefully taken notes of the marching orders on uh, uh, the specific questions or type of documents or one pagers you have referred to. Uh, we have also taken note that some questions do not have a clear cut answers yet and require a, a push and a process and a process of, um, of thinking and engagement with others uh, for taking, uh, for reaching a point where we, we start having answers and testing them. Um, what we will commit to is, is of course, we have this uh, um, review that has been conducted. We will use this review uh, for uh, advocating for the obvious points uh, that have been raised. Uh, I will work uh, with uh, with Dahlia and uh, and maybe a couple of you to give us feedback to write uh, specific letters for all humanitarian coordinators uh, putting our key asks and issues for their attention and attaching uh, this document we'll do that in collaboration with uh, results group one and uh, and ocha to uh, to be a step uh, in the momentum we're we're building forward we will as well uh, <clears throat> look at uh, of course dahlia is from procap we'll look at uh, one of the major uh, players that have been facilitating these processes procap to to already uh, start uh, adopting some of these recommendations and the and the processes that that are ongoing and finally of course we have the guidelines that is coming up dahlia uh, will be working on it uh, it should be uh, ready uh, in the in the last quarter of the year, uh, and that would also give an opportunity uh, to uh, define uh, the next generation of uh, the, the the strategies or the strategic approaches. Um, it's a process. Uh, we're, uh, I think, on a good track 
to uh, improve on it uh, and go forward. I've been encouraged by the conversation and uh, the practical inputs uh, from you and will keep uh, pushing in the direction you have said. Big thanks for you, Dalia, for the uh, fantastic experience, expertise and collaborative process that you bring uh, to us here and looking forward to continue collaborating with you. With this, I would like to thank you, everyone, and uh, wish you a nice afternoon or evening or morning, depending where you are in the world. Thank you, everyone, and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.